Let's talk about constraints in Figma. With the help of some simple examples, I'm going to help you understand how these can be useful for you in your daily UI design work. So this is a very common feature in most of the design tools available in the market right now. So in this video, we're going to see how it works on Figma, but this is also available in no code tools like Framer and Webflow. So what you see on my screen is a common representation on how they try to teach you constraints, but this is not really so intuitive. So let's try to understand with simple examples on how this is actually helpful for you in your daily UI design work. So let's jump quickly onto the screen and see how these work, right? So first thing, let's understand the terminologies here and then we'll jump onto the examples. So right here, I have a frame and inside the frame, I have an element. And once you select the element on the right side, you can see this uh, option or a section which says constraints. And there are two types of constraints, right? One is vertical and one is horizontal. So this is a horizontal one in which you have left, right, left and right, center and scale. This is going to be common in both. That is on the vertical one. So on the vertical axis, it's obviously top, bottom, top and bottom, right? And this is a visual uh, representation where you can just select these option in a more visual manner, right? So once I select the frame and I start to resize it, you can see that the element inside it doesn't move. That is because it is always sticking to the left and to the top. So this is very common. Uh, let's move on to the next one. This will help you understand much better. So once I start resizing this, you can see that the element sticks to the right and to the bottom. How much ever I resize it, it is always in that particular position. What it's trying to do is it's trying to maintain this uh, gap here and this gap here so that it's always consistent. And in this example, you can see that the element is left and right and top, right? So what that means is this element will always try to maintain this gap here and this gap here consistent. It'll try to scale itself, but it always tries to maintain this uh, spacing right here. So once I select this and increase the width, you can see how the width is increasing, but uh, to the bottom, it's not because it's always uh, trying to maintain this top gap right here. To understand this much more easily, so let me just try to draw a rectangle right here. So I'm just drawing a rectangle and this one is 195 and I'll just duplicate it and place one to this one. And I'm just going to set the width right here. So this one is 30 and this one is 195. So I'm just going to place this at the top and I'm going to increase this, the width of this one. And now if you see, if I place this right here, which is 195, it is always the same. And if I place this one right here, this is consistent, right? So that gap is always tried to maintain in this uh, left and right. The same thing uh, here, the top and bottom, but this one will maintain this gap right here and this gap right here. So if I increase the frame right here, you can see how the it's scaling vertically, but not horizontally because it's always sticking to the left. So those are some positional ones. And there's one more in positional one, which is the center. The element always tries to have a relative position to the center. So in this case, even if I increase it uh, vertically and horizontally, it always tries to align itself to the center, right? So now it's horizontally and vertically center. Even if I do this one, it is always uh, horizontally and vertically center aligned. So that is how center works. And there's also one thing which is scale. So in this case, I have set both the horizontal and vertical to scale. And in this case, once I increase the frame, tries to basically scale the element uh, in proportion with the frame, right? So that's basically how these work. Now let's try to understand it much easier with some examples. So here is a one with the positional one. So this is left, right, top and bottom. So this is a drop down, right? So this is uh, a common drop down that we use in our UI design. And right now, if I want to scale this uh, the width of it it's increasing the width but the drop down here is not uh, changing its position right so the drop down always has to stick to the right even if I scale the design so right now the default is applied to these elements so every time you drop in an element left and top is the default constraint that gets applied so that is why it's not moving right so in this case this element always has to stick to the left but in case I increase the height of this it has to be in the center as well right so for that uh, to work I'm gonna select this element right here and vertically I'm gonna apply center so now if you see, if I increase the frame's height, it always tries to align it to the center vertically. So that is working right. What to do with this element right here? So I'm going to select this element and horizontally, I'm going to apply the right so that it always sticks to the right. And vertically, I want the center because it has to be in the center as well. So now if I want to uh, use this drop down somewhere else with a different width, it's working. And if I want to use this drop down somewhere else with a different height, it still works, right? And now let's uh, see another example how we can use top and bottom as well. So in this example, this is small window. And if I increase the height of it, I basically want the button to stick to the bottom because the button always has to be at the bottom uh, in case I want to add more colors or things like that, right? So what to do? It's pretty simple. I'm just going to select the button right here. And instead of aligning it to the top, uh, so not right now it is trying to maintain this uh, distance from the top. So what I'm going to do is just select this and apply bottom. 
and that's it we are done uh, once i increase the frames height you can see how the button sticks to the bottom and now i can increase the colors or add some content here as well so that's how uh, the top and bottom works and now let's see how the left and right top and bottom works right so this is uh, maintaining the gap between the left and the right and the top and the bottom together so let's say in this particular example uh, once i increase the width i also want the button to increase it does it shouldn't be this width it has to increase along with the frame as well right so what i'm going to do is just select the button and instead of aligning it to the left i want this space right here and this space right here to be maintained for that i'm going to select this apply left and right and that's it it's done so now if you see even if i increase the windows uh, width here the button also increases and tries to maintain this left and right so along with that i also want this element right here to remain at the center as well right so what i'm going to do just select this and horizontally it has to be in the center always and now if you see the button increases and this always remains in the center so that is how we can basically use this uh, to align it uh, equally between left and right or top or bottom so that was another example and yeah now this one we're going to see how scale works previously you saw that once i increase the width of this this one remains in the center but it doesn't scale along with the frame side right so as you increase the frame width i also want this particular thing to you know increase in size so that it maintains the position there and it fills the complete area so right now if you see this it is set to left and top so i'm going to change both of these to scale so once i change that to scale and this one we are going to set it at left and right and this one i'm going to set it to bottom and now let's see how this behaves right so as i increase the frame uh, width here width and height you can see how this one scales with respect to the size of the frame and this one always remains at the bottom with the left and right maintained. So right here we have a card which has an image on the top. It has a tag which shows the number of likes. It has a title, it has a button and some extra information as well. So if you can see uh, once I select this card and I start to increase the size, you can see even if I increase the width in case I want to use a wider card, in case I want to use a taller card, the elements inside it tries to adapt to the different sizes and it works seamlessly, right? So in case I want to use one, uh, a taller one like this, it works. In case I duplicate it, I want to use one as a wider one, it works, right? So how does this uh, work so seamlessly is because we have used different constraints for different elements so that it adapts to the kind of behavior that we want. So if you select the elements, we can see the difference, right? So this image right here is set to left and right, top and bottom. So however you resize it, these gaps right here are always maintained and that's how it scales. And if you see See these elements right here it is set to left because this always has to stick to the left and this button has to stick to the right so you can see that the constraint is also set to the right so that is how we can use different constraints on different elements on how you want them to behave and create such complex components which will scale seamlessly on whatever size that you apply it on and that's how you can create responsive designs as well so it's a really great feature which helps you to scale your design and it saves a lot of time so you should definitely start using constraints on your design and then adding auto Auto layout onto these constraints will take your designs to the next level so you can scale it more seamlessly and you can make design changes within seconds and not have to worry about the layout everything will be set properly so that's it about constraints i hope you found this helpful and as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one